Windows, A Play with Music by Melissa Schaefer Act 1, Scene 1 Projected on screens, the more the merrier, ceiling 2, are serene scenes of Brody, Poland, countryside. Rolling grassy hills, swaying ash, juniper, and larch trees, poppy fields, golden buttercups, and blue hepatica. Vast skies with a setting sun, lazy clouds drifting by, sounds of breezes rustling wheat, birds chirping, distant laughter, pump-in scents of the forest and fields intoxicate the audience's senses. Young Guinea stands silhouetted back to the audience, swept into this bucolic dream. We hear her mama's voice call her. Mama, musically, Guinea! Guinea, come home. Guinea, I'm coming, Mama. Linger in this bliss for a minute, then blackout. In blackness, sound of the roll of cattle car doors sliding and their locks clanking shut, the shriek of metal on metal, wheels of trains straining under the weight of packed humans speeding toward death camps, Moans and wails of those trapped inside, shouts in Ukrainian and Polish by SS soldiers, gunshots, screams, bodies thudding on the tracks, builds to crescendo. Scene two. Shock of bright light. Home. Sunlight pours in windows of a white kitchen. Pots and pans on hooks hang next to black and white family photos and newspaper articles tacked on the wall. A coffee pot, teapot, and seltzer bottle sit atop a white cupboard. Fine china and goblets gleam inside its glass doors. Wooden chairs surround a wooden table covered with a tablecloth embroidered with delicate flowers. A coffee grinder and rolling pin rest near ceramic coffee, flour, and sugar jars. A salt jar is nailed to the wall by the stove. A few dolls in a child's sewing machine sit on a rug near a fireplace. Polish music plays on a radio in the next room. Zigo stands staring at the top of the cupboard. Guinea, just do it. Beat. Zigo, just do it. Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Hurry up before she comes home. Beat. Zigo, come on, you're driving me crazy. Zigo, but what if she needs it? Guinea, well, just take a little. Zigo, like... For she's something she's baking, Guinea. She won't notice it's gone. Zigo, for dinner tonight, then you'll be sorry. Guinea, we'll take one small piece. Zigo, she'll be furious. We'll all miss out. Guinea, Zigo, for God's sake, be a man. Zigo, what if she's baking babka or don't say that? I am a man, you little twerp. Guinea, come on already. You're wasting too much time. Zigo, don't ask me to do this and then insult me. Guinea, with your good conscience, just do it. Beat. Stare down. Guinea pouts, blinks her lashes. Zigo, sighing, fine, fine. You don't think she'll notice the difference? Guinea shakes her head no, grabs a chair, plants it by cupboard. Once, Guinea, don't ever ask me again. Please, promise me, Guinea. Okay, I promise. She looks stinking cute. He climbs up. Guinea takes the lookout by the window. Zigo, you're relentless. He reaches behind the tea and coffee pots. Honest to God, you never stop. Guinea, stop talking and hurry up. Zigo, till you get what you want. Guinea, oh, no, she's coming. Zigo, what? Guinea, she's coming. Hurry up, Zigo. Zigo, I'm getting down. Guinea, no, please. Zigo, I'm trying. Guinea, just grab it. Zigo, I got it. Zingo leads, leans too far, keels into the cupboard. Everything, china, goblets, come crashing down. They both fall on the glass, stunned. Zigo, oh my God, Guinea. There's glass in the chocolate, Zigo. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Guinea, we can't even eat it. Zigo, she's going to kill us. Your hands are bleeding. One look in each other's eyes, then run. In the next room, they dive beneath their parents' beds. 
Mama enters the house. She doesn't notice at first. <gasps> oh my God! What happened? Zigo? Guinea? What happened? Oh my God! My china? Our glasses? My God! Guinea! Zigo! Mama drops her groceries, searches for them. Mama, her calls echo. Guinea! Zigo! Where are you? Come out right this minute! What did you do? Mama enters her bedroom, opens the armoire drawers, looks under one bed, sees Guinea. Guinea, get out from under there. What did you do? Guinea rolls under the other bed. She and Zigo switch places. Mama, stop it, Zigo. Guinea, get out now, Zigo. You're too old for this. You should be ashamed of yourself. Come out. Papa comes home, hears Mama shouting, calls her. I don't know her name yet. Maybe Ruth. He sees the mess. <gasps> Oh, my God, Ruth, are you all right? Where are you? He rushes toward the sound of her crying. Mama, they won't come out. I can't get them out. Tato, that's Papa. What happened? Where are they? She points under the beds. Tato stoops down. Guinea comes out. Zigo, Guinea, come out. This is pa uh, Tato. Zigo, get up. Now. They don't budge. Mama, make them do it. Beryl, you're too nice to them. They destroyed everything. Our dishes, the glasses. Tato, get out now. The both of you, I mean it. Guinea, don't hit me, Papa. Tato, when have I ever? Zigo climbing out. It was an accident. Mama, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Guinea, Zigo did it. Zigo, she made me. Tato, she's a child. Zigo, she's manipulative as hell. Guinea, what does that mean? Zigo, you're a conniving mama still crying. Just stop it. What did you do? Beat. Finally, Zigo. Guinea wanted chocolate. Beat. Beat. They look at each other. Mama's tears turn to laughter. Papa smiles. All of them collapse on one bed, hysterical. You're not off the hook. You're still going to get it. Beryl, talk to them. Tato, I'm not going to touch you. I'll talk to you, and you'll listen closely. I can only tell you how to behave, understand? What you do is up to you. But if you don't listen to me and Mama... You'll find out when you go out into the world. Tato jerks his hand like he's going to slap them. They flinch. Life will smack you right across the face. You hear me? Fade to darkness. Scene three. View of kitchen and bedroom Zigo and Guinea share. Mama cooks. Steam rises from pots and sizzling pans on the stove. Logs crackle in the fireplace. A girl's stockings and wool dress hang from the mantel. Tato sits at the kitchen table, drinking coffee, reading newspaper, wipes his mouth with, embroider with embroidered napkin, whistles as he goes to the kid's bedroom, tossles Guinea's hair, pats Zigo and Fetter, that means uncle, on their backs, says goodbye. He dons his coat and hat, slips a small prayer book in his pocket, kisses Mama goodbye, and exits stage. Fetter speaks in Yiddish. Zigo. Come on, sleepyhead, Fetter. Rise and shine, Zigo. Fetter, she's playing dead, Fetter. Let me ask you something, Guinea. A person dreams that she's sailing on a ship with her father and mother. The ship is sinking. She can only save herself and one other person. She wants to save her father and her mother. What should she do? Guinea pops her head out from under the covers. That's awful. I don't know. Fetter. She should wake up. Guinea. Fetter. Fetter grabs her and hugs her. Zigo. Come on, Shanefilla. I hung your stockings by the fire. They'll be toasty. Guinea. Bitte. Can one of you bring them so I can put them on in bed? Zigo. Guinea. Fetter, of course, Shane Kite. It's fine, Zigo. We're all under her spell. Mama, Zigo, bring the bathtub into the kitchen, please. Fetter fetches Guinea's clothing, 
and brings it to her, then retreats to the kitchen for breakfast. Guinea changes under her blanket. Zigo carries the bathtub on stage. He forks a potato sizzling on the stove. Mama mocks irritation. Guinea pads into the kitchen. She traces snowflakes frozen to the window, breathes on the glass, and draws a smiley face in the fog. In the village, a clock tower chimes eight times. Zigo, God, it smells like heaven. Jan's coming for dinner tonight, Mama. I don't understand what you get out of this relationship. You help him with his homework. He stays for dinner and eats like a horse, Zigo. He wants latkes. Mama dictates what I should cook, Zigo. He loves your gefilte fish, Mama. You can't eat his mother's cooking. If she even cooks, he wouldn't pass any of his classes without your help. Zigo, he's not so bad. Mama, he's not coming during Pesach, Zigo. Only family and Jews on the holiday. Zigo, okay, okay, I got it. He hugs her from behind, kisses the back of her head. Zigo, bye, Mama. Mama, Guinea, come eat breakfast. Zigo snatches Guinea and flies her to a seat at the table. She protests, kicks, and giggles. He pinches her cheek, then bundles himself in scarf, scarf coat cap. Guinea, ow, ow, mama, tell him to stop pinching me. I can't stand it anymore. You have to choose. It's either me or him. Zigo, I only do it because I love you so much. See ya, monkey. Mama shakes her head. Zigo grabs the satchel of books. When he opens the door, wind and snow blow in. Guinea pouts, sticks her finger in the jam, and sucks on it. Scene four. Projections of late afternoon summer countryside, rolling green hills, apple trees, sounds of birds, cows mooing, horses' hooves on dirt, pulling carts loaded with barley, wheat, corn on squeaky wooden wheels. A train whistle. Projections of a passenger train. Guinea is the first to disembark. She jogs into the field toward an apple tree, dumping her suitcase on the way. Zigo and Mama detrain. Mama searches for Guinea. Guinea? Beat. Guinea! Zigo, there she is, Mama. He starts walking toward Guinea. Guinea, come back! Guinea, come eat apples! Mama, come on, let's go to the dacha. Guinea, come eat apples. Beat. Zigo picks up Guinea's suitcase, turns back to Mama, and shrugs. Mama softens, walks toward them. Near the tree, Zigo and Mama dump their luggage, pick apples, plop on the ground, and eat. <laughs>